there. It's Michelle here. I hope you're doing really well today. I am hopping on because we are talking about how to stop taking on other people's energy. So it is the biggest issue, I think, with empaths and sensitives. Um, and it's on a spectrum, right? Like, so our gifts as empaths and sensitives are to that's what we do we can pick up on subtle energy we are sensitive to the thoughts feelings and emotions of others it's like it is a gift it's the way we're wired but it can be um it can turn into a disability so let's talk about like the spectrum of taking on other people's thoughts feelings emotions pains like let's look at it like a spectrum at the worst end now i'm always just sharing with you like my experience right if this doesn't ever if, my, if what i'm saying doesn't resonate with you then you throw it out the window or maybe even in the chat you just say michelle i think blah 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 because we're learning and growing together i don't have all the answers right like i only share with you from the way I'm wired and my experiences and all the ways I've healed myself. And then I've gone on to help a lot more people in their lives. And so I base what I know on that experience also. Does that make sense? But this is not like set in stone ever. It's just my experience. Um, Sharon's here. Hi, Sharon. And Gabe's here. Hello, Gabe. So um, again, we're talking about empath sensitives, taking on other people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I'm telling you from my experience, I'm sharing, I really just share what I know. And if it helps you, awesome. And if it doesn't resonate with you, be okay with letting it go. Okay, so let's look at taking on other people's stuff, <laughs> their energy as a spectrum. At the, the lowest end or the worst end or the most disabling end is you can't leave your house. It's very hard to go to the grocery store. It's very hard to be out socially. You can easily pick up on the like anxieties, the sadnesses, the depressions, the oppressions in the world. Like you can pick up on those things to the point where you want to isolate yourself. On this lower end of the spectrum, I also see a lot of empaths taking on the actual physical pain and ailments of others. Like that's that's the lowest I've seen, or that's the most, I call it disabling, because you can't live your life and be happy when you are carrying other people's stuff. Does that make sense? Put it in the chat if, that's, if that makes sense. Hi Jonesies and Vicki and Stacy. good morning. Um, Vicki said she signed up for the master class. Awesome. We're going to dive deeper into the master class on Thursday about what we're going to do here today. So I just want to share the spectrum first. We can pick up on the thoughts, feelings, and emotions of others, and it can be, be turned into a disability for us where we can't actually live the life we want to live because we're picking up on so much stuff. The physical pain, the anxiety, the stresses, the depressions. Does that make sense? I know all of us have felt that. So, and then there's a spectrum. So that's one end of the spectrum. And then if we go all the way to the other end of the spectrum, I'll call this the thriving empath. The thriving empath can still resonate or still see the, pick up on the thoughts, feelings, emotions of others, but they don't carry it themselves. They can recognize it and hold their own vibration. They don't take it on anymore, but they can pick up on it. Does that make sense? I consider myself a thriving empath now, but honestly, I'm never always thriving. Not, I don't think anybody is. Like we are all moving on the spectrum. Like when I get sick, physically sick, I fall down the spectrum a little bit and it's easier for me to pick up on people's stuff when I'm vulnerable, when my, when my immune system's lower. Like I can pick up on other people's stuff easier does that make sense it's almost like a virus isn't it like if your immune system is low you can pick up on a virus easier it kind of feels like that to me does this make sense total sense awesome yes yes 
Yes, absolutely. Definitely makes sense. Good. Yes. Um, Jonesy says, yes, I had to stop doing massage therapy because I would be ill for days after. Yes. Yes. The dream is if you love massage therapy and you love that is your life purpose, maybe it's not, but if it is, then you need to get to a level of thriving and healing that you can do that work without taking on people's stuff. Does that make sense? So really in this video today, I really just wanted to like make you aware of the spectrum from the surviving side where you're literally taking on the pains, the anxieties. In the masterclass on Thursday, I want to talk more. I'm going to go deep into why we do that. So a lot of us, for those of us who are taking on the thoughts, feelings, and emotions and pains of others, there's more to that. And if you want to deep dive into that with us, um, join the masterclass happening Thursday. I have the link to register in the um, description here. But I, I don't. This is takes. It's this is a really. I don't want to say complicated, but it's a long conversation. It's a deeper conversation. And I would love to just be able to tell you it right now. There's reasons why we do this and they turn into, we do it eventually unconsciously. It becomes a pattern and it's almost like consciously we know we don't want to do that anymore, but we can't break the pattern of taking on other people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So in the master class on Thursday, I definitely want to talk about this being a pattern and I want to talk about the tools and techniques to break the pattern. But the first step is to be aware that you might be doing it. Does that make sense? Hopefully that is making sense. Molly says, I'm an empath. I have lupus. I really need to figure out a better way to get grounded. Molly, please sign up for Thursday um, if you can. I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not even a therapist. I call myself a healer based on how I've helped myself and others. I notice a lot of empaths have autoimmune issues. I notice empaths, a lot of us are spend way too much time in hypersensitivity. And in hypersensitivity, I think we are susceptible to getting sick. We're susceptible to getting other people's stuff. And I, I really, I'm going to bring that up on Thursday too. Like we need to talk about that. I got to write these things down because I want to make sure I put them. Um, we talk about them on Thursday in the deeper dive. Hypersensitivity and the pattern of taking on other people's stuff. Um, I don't want to forget this because they're so important. And I'm working on that master class today. And um, so I know talking to you is going to help me get clear about what we really need to do. And thank you, Molly, for bringing that up. Um, let me see. Let me see what else is going on here. Okay, good. So, so people are starting to talk about their autoimmune issues. Rheumatoid arthritis. I've been diagnosed with that one too. Fibromyalgia. Yeah, so the, if you feel free to post them in the, in the sidebar there, the chat. Like you'll see... You know what I notice with people? They don't. They have. They don't have much awareness that their empathic abilities are creating some of the illness, and it's the patterns that we. They're unconscious patterns of taking on other people's stuff. That's one thing. I feel like I'm going to go in all different directions here, and I apologize. I promise to dive deeper on on Thursday, but that's just one thing that's going on. So on Thursday, I. I can just tell already by your comments that we are going to have a deep dive Thursday. And I think, I think the group's going to be small on Thursday and I'll be able to talk to you maybe one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to make sure I spend a lot of time talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. That's the feeling I get. But we, there is a certain level of healing that we need to do. There is a certain level of like waking up to the patterns that have been running unconsciously that we need to become aware of. And as soon as we, as soon as we do that, we will start moving up the spectrum out of hypersensitivity 
and into sensitivity. <laughs> Hypersensitivity, it, I really think, causes illness and disease eventually. Again, I'm not a doctor nurse. This is just my own experience. And when I help people get out of the hypersensitivity of being an empath and just become sensitive, there's more opportunities for balance, health, and like, I want to say boundaries, like you're going to know more about your self versus someone else's self. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm going on and on and on here. Molly says, could you send me the info for Thursday? I have a horrible memory. No worries. You know, and there's a description either this way or this way. Um, and I put the link to the class for Thursday in that link. And you can just click the link and you'll be able to register. Oh, thank you, Daniela. Thank you. She put the link in the chat. That was awesome. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say about that? What, what questions do you have? So I'm here to help you today. And the only thing I really wanted to talk about is the spectrum. And I wanted you to be aware of the surviving hypersensitivity side, taking on everyone's stuff. And then you having anxiety and depression. And then I wanted to share with you all the way up to the thriving side where you can be and do what you're supposed to be doing in the world and still remain sensitive. I don't think we can get rid of our sensitivity. I could be wrong. Um, again, it's a spectrum. I'm more sensitive sometimes than others. Um, but we want to be thriving. We want to be able to do what we're called to do in the world, to, to be who we're supposed to be in the world. Does that make sense? I think that's the thriving side. <laughs> Daniela says, I should work for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome, Daniela. That would be great. Um, okay, so that's what I wanted to do in this video. And the other thing I want to say, what questions do you have? Because on the Thursday Masterclass, when we dive in deep, I want to make sure, like my in my heart on Thursday, I want to get some real healing done, some real awareness about where you are. And I, I always have the intention. It's like this, God, send me people I can help. And I don't want it to take years. Like if we're together for an hour, let's let that be healing. <laughs> you know, like I want, I almost want it. I, I want miracles. What I want, what appears to be miracles for people. And I don't think they're miracles anymore. I call them, we all deserve to be healthy, happy, and living our life purpose. And that's what I want. That's what we'll do on Thursday. We're going to work together and see all the healing that can take place for all of us, what we can create together. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, I'm going to read some of these. I recently went through some really crazy stuff. It was tough, but woke up to patterns that I wasn't aware of. I'm still finding boundaries and not being so hypersensitive and feel drained all the time. All right, Shannon, I hope you sign up for Thursday. I would love to work with you. And um, yeah, I know what I just said before, like I want almost instant healings and I do, but like with Shannon right now, I can just feel like we need to take like two steps, Shannon. I just need to go through two steps with you and then I feel like you're going to almost say it, like you're going to get with the direction of health and healing. Does that make sense? Vicki says, can you absorb through music? I seem to pick up on what people are feeling through songs, but I can pick up on physical pain. You can? Yes, I think it's absolutely, I think that's one of the gifts of music, right, is the emotion that they evoke for people. And then we really feel it because we're empaths. So I absolutely think that's possible, Vicki. Um, I think a lot of empaths pick up on the physical pain of people. I think they can fit, pick up on the physical pain of animals, of what's going on on the planet. If they know a group of people on the earth somewhere are suffering, they can feel it. It's, I don't, I, I've been working at this for a long time and I don't want to sound harsh, but it's, we have our compassion mixed in with not all of us. A lot of us feel it because we believe that equals compassion. 
and it does, but there's a better way to do it. I feel like now I hold my personal vibration and I have compassion as I hold my pers personal vibration. I do not believe I need to feel the physical pain of someone anymore to resonate and feel compassion for them. And I think that's hard for some empaths to hear because I, I, I know, because I, I was like this and I still work with people, that they believe resonating with someone where they're at is the highest level of compassion. And it is a form of compassion, but I don't think it's the best way to operate if we really want to lift people up, if we all want to become healthier. Does that make sense or are you guys like this about that? What do you guys think about that? I feel like that's a controversial thing to say. Molly says yes, or, but she was probably talking to somebody else. Anxiety is a huge issue. Cross country move made me so sick after doing really well. Yeah, Christina, that's really normal to have a big change in your life and you fall down the spectrum. Now, what I understand now is when I have big changes coming that I'm planning, like a move or, or something like that or a vacation, I buffer time before and after because I know I fall down the spectrum easily with big change because I'm aware now. I'm aware that I fall off, fall down the spectrum with big changes, so I buffer it now. <laughs> Does that make sense? And with that buffering that I do, I get to stay in the thriving, or I have a better chance of staying and thriving. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Christina also says, my daughter is very sensitive and we feel each other's energies. Yes, our our loved ones, our children especially, we feel their stuff the most. So even with them, but how do I want to say this? What, we, what I believe we want to do is we want to start separating ourselves from our children, not our love from them, not our compassion, but we don't want to feel their stuff. We want to hear them talk about their stuff. We want to feel compassion for them, but we hold our own energy. And why do we want to do that? Because we want to teach our children to not do that with their children. We want to start teaching the next generation how to hold their own energy and still love and have compassion for each other, right? It's almost like breaking the cycle. We literally want to break the cycle of our energies being so mishmashed that we can't tell one from another. Does that make sense? I feel like some of the things I'm saying, you guys aren't gonna like. Um, Sarah says, some of you might be clairsentient, not just empathic. I would love to know what you think the difference is, Sarah. I don't, I don't see a difference in those, to be honest with you. I call, they're the same thing to me, but I would love to know Clairsentience is just clear feeling, right? Empathy or being empathic is maybe it's not clear feeling. You just feel, but you're not clear about those feelings. So maybe there is a little bit of the difference. I use them almost interchangeably, though. Christina says, yes, makes sense. Healthy boundaries, yes. Um, Katrina says, what is clairsentient? I hope we just... Uh, and Daniela says the same thing. Clairsentient is a, is a um, clear feeling. Clear feeling. Does that make sense? You will. We talk about that in the empaths or no, in the um, intuition circle group. But um, we can talk more about that another day. Shannon says makes sense. Daniela says okay. Okay, good. So this video was about I just wanted you to figure out where you are in the spectrum from really taking on other people's stuff and it's making you sick or unhealthy or being diagnosed with things and I'm not saying every diagnosis has to do with that I just want you to start thinking to yourself like what does my autoimmune thing or what does my feeling bad or what does my anxiety is this someone else's or is it mine 
Am I running the pattern of taking on other people's stuff? The other pattern that I see people running is that they actually have healing to do on the inside and it's just someone else's stuff is just resonating with the unhealed stuff in them. That's another pattern I see running in people. We'll talk about that on Thursday. And then the spectrum goes all the way up to you hold your own high vibe. You understand yourself. You are living your life purpose. You feel balanced most of the time and you're doing what you're called to do in the world. That is a thriving empath. Where are you on this spectrum? Again, we're not static on the spectrum. We move depending on, you know, what's going on in the world and in our lives. We move, but where do you spend most of your time on that spectrum? I'm trying to get us to thriving. <laughs> I, that's my goal. And on Thursday then, I want to take a deeper dive with this. In fact, just talking with you right now, I can see I'm not going to have that many trainings. I'm going to I am going to have some some training for us, a master class, but I'm going to shorten it because I just want to work individually with people and see if we can really get some healing um, done or at least a few steps forward. Okay, hope that helps. Um, okay, I hope that helps you guys. If you're interested in the master class, join us Thursday. I think it's going to be a small group for some reason, and that's okay because then I'll just have more time to talk with people individually. And if it calls to you, join. And I hope this helped you. Just where are you on the spectrum is step one. Okay, have a great day. Bye.